Hello everyone, this is Billy. If you've been watching my videos on hydroponics, you know that I've been creating flow valves manually using water bottles and other components, balloon sticks, silicon tapes, things like that. Today I'm going to show you how to use a 3D printer to print out a flow valve. I've spent around a few days to design this flow valve so it can function properly. Uh, it's so small, you can put it in the smallest tank you have. Uh, it's for people in the city who want to grow some hydroponic fruits or vegetable. If you also like to grow some fruits and vegetable and don't want to worry about running out of nutrient or water, watch on and create your own flow valve. So you can uh, connect a big nutrient tank to your growth bed and water will, a nutrient will be flowing to your growth bed without you watching. No pumps, no electricity involved, just a big nutrient tank, a pipe and this flow valve is all you need to control the water level, ensure your plants has enough nutrient as well as not drowned by too much nutrient because the flow valve is going to control the water level at 2 cm only and keep replenishing it for, your, for you while you are asleep or traveling outside. Hello there, this is Billy. Recently I've learned how to use 3D printing software to print my design. For example, this one that I'm printing right now, I'm showing to you right now is the water level controller. This is the body, the box. You can see from the top, there is a hydroponics flow valve, and there's a hole here where you can put in this pipe to feed in the water or nutrient solution. And on the side is the pivot for the flow valve. So we have the, the same hole at both ends. We operate this way. When the water is dropped to the lowest level, the flow valve will be dropped and water will flow in from the in pipe. Water flows through the holes here and get out of the flow valve and then nourish all the plants. As more and more nutrients fill up the tank, the flow valve will move up. And then once it moves up, the silicon tape paste here will seal up the inlet pipe. So water flow and nutrient flow will stop. As the plants continue to consume the water, water level drops, the flow valve will drop also, and then water will flow in again. And there's a little window there for you to monitor how closely the flow valve uh, is sealing the water. And this hole also serves as the air hole because without the air hole, the flow valve will not be able to close the gap to seal the, the inflow. To print it, you just uh, start this menu from Fusion 360 and then click 3D Print and then you select uh, the whole thing name the values is the whole thing okay every three components selected and then you can click OK I'm using the Ultra Ultimaker Cura software uh, that works quite well with my Ender Pro Ender 3 Pro 3D printer from Creality. Right, so let me show you. So this is the screen of Cura. And then we can uh, adjust this setting here. I want it to be sustainable, so I put in uh, 
higher percentage of infill. Um, it's usually default to 20, so I double it to 40. So the material will be harder. You can keep it for longer. And then for support, if you you need uh, some overhand parts like like this one, uh, some of the extender part here is overhanging. There's no supporting under underneath. You see it's highlighted in red. Right, all this highlighted in red. This is where the support material, the infill, will be printed. Okay, so we will print the infill, and but only it's on the parts touching the build plate only. Okay, that means at the bottom here only. We don't want the infill inside the holes, otherwise it will be hard to drill through. Okay, and then we can click the slice button over here. Then we'll do the slicing, convert it into the G code that my 3D printer will be using. And then we need to do a last check called preview. Yeah, we can preview and see whether the parts are printed all right, whether the holes expected to be holes there are, are really holes and will not be filled up. Sometimes there will be uh, setup issues that the holes are field so just want to check the holes also we want to check uh, whether the first layer is printed properly so this is the first layer and then we can gradually move this slider to watch as if the 3d printer simulated how it's printed just make sure you see this is the infill. It's just building out triangular walls inside. Okay, you can uh, change the degree, the angle to look at it. And just make sure all the parts should be holes, they are holes, should be solid, they are solid. Okay, otherwise it's okay to print. And you can click save to file save it to your uh, to your to your smart card and then uh, put the smart card the flash card into the 3d printer to print the printing time is around three to four hours depending on your printer after printing out the 3d model from the 3d printer just use sandpaper to clean up the edges for the hole sometimes the hole is not printed properly then you need to use your drill pit to drill through it uh, this hole is three uh, around 2.6 millimeter is for us to put in the m3 screw so you don't need to drill a three millimeter hole otherwise it will be very loose just 2.6 or 2.5 millimeter is fine. For this hole, uh, it is 3.5 millimeter, so you may want to use the drill to drill through it, otherwise, uh, it may not work. There may be some residue 3D printing material stuck inside. When you drill it, make sure you do not drill through this inner pipe, otherwise, there will be leakage of water. The two other material we'll need is this bamboo stick for kids. You just need to cut one side of it. The other side will just make it a triangle so it's easier to insert into your feeding duct. And then like I told you show you before, we need to smooth it out using the sandpaper. So make sure this side is very smooth and flat. Okay, the next thing we need to do is tie this type of 3mm or 2mm silicon tape. Some of that are on both sides, some are on one side. Make sure what we need is a hard, it's not a hard surface, it's a soft surface. Right? This part is hard, this part is soft, so we need a soft surface, we need just cut out a red, uh, square 
a bit okay. and then we can stick it on top at the middle closer to where you get the holes okay like that if you have the two side silicon tape you need to take out this hard cover otherwise it won't be able to block the water we need the soft side facing up soft side here uh, mine is a double side so it's a bit sticky so we need to use our finger to make it less sticky or water when you have water it will be less sticky we can't have it as sticky as this otherwise it will block the water when the inlet goes in it just won't let go it's so sticky so we need to just rub our finger where uh, some minor particle will be stuck on the surface to make it less sticky okay okay let's try it's a bit better when water gets in it will help water will make it less sticky okay so assuming it's done next what you need to do is is to find two M3 screws the screw need to be at least around 1 1 cm long uh, or a quarter of a, a 0.75 millimeter uh, 7.5 millimeter long then you can just screw it in like this using your screwdriver so the first few run it will be a hard to screw but uh, after that it should be fine if you find it too hard to screw in using a plastic screw you can go for the metal screw first so once the metal screw successfully screw through it you can replace with the plastic screw the reason why we don't want metal screw is the um, hydroponic nutrient solutions is corrosive so if you have metal there some chemical reaction may happen and may uh, the, the screw may be stained and then corrupted very soon so once we screw in make sure we align it with the hole there so the screw goes inside the hole okay once it's done you can you can see it's uh, freely movable let me do the other part the other side again put in the screw Then make sure you align with the holes there. Okay. okay. Gets in. Okay, done. Once it gets in, you find that it should be freely movable. move up and move down move up and move down okay the last thing we need to do is we need to look at this window as we uh, insert the balloon stack here vertically 90 degree on all surfaces just twist and push it in and you see you'll be able to see it uh, through the window here see the window here let me shed some lights here you'll be able to see it easy you can see the uh, balloon stick inside and what we need to do is we need to hold this flow valve in parallel and then push 
push the balloon stack in until this is uh, parallel right so we can just push it push it until it's parallel okay it's not parallel now it's parallel okay that's the place we want to be in see again so this is going down going up And then we need to check that this is right angle, right angle. All right. Okay. So this is this is done. Now you have it. The flow valve. Next is the testing of with the water. Do a test the water rise until two centimeter and then it stop rising that means the flow valve is in action blocking the inflow of water then let's pump the water away and see whether the flow valve can drop down again and let water flow in again so water is filling up again until two centimeter and then the flow valve is in action and stopped. I've been developing another version of the flow valve so we don't need to use the screw to fasten the pivot we just click in the flow valve so I'm testing it once I finish testing I will post another video if you like my video please click like subscribe and send to your friends to watch too bye now